So how important is upper cervical stability for shoulder function, or why can't I lift my arms overhead? Now in medicine, we've really screwed things up. We've got a shoulder and a neck and a thoracic spine, but it's all one big connected machine. And I'm gonna show you that through a really interesting case. This is a guy who was born without this bone right here called the dens. And because that stabilizes the C1 on the C2, this particular bone tends to move quite a bit against this one because it doesn't have that bony stability. So as I play this video, you can see that the upper neck uh, moves too much. The C1 or atlas moves a lot on the C2. So there's no question that this guy has got upper cervical instability. Now I'm going to ask him to raise his arms overhead and he's going to struggle. And then I'm going to stabilize his head on his neck and it's much easier for him to lift his arms overhead. So you can see here he's struggling. And now I stabilize his head on his neck and boom, arms go right up. So what just happened? Why, how could that be? Well, with an unstable upper neck, he's using his upper trap and levator scap muscles to both stabilize his upper neck and lift his arms. But when I stabilize his head and upper neck, these muscles now only have to lift his arms. They're no longer doing double duty. And I've seen the same phenomenon for many years in patients who have upper neck instability, either due to muscle atrophy or CCJ, upper neck instability. So the next time you see a patient who has trouble lifting arms overhead, think outside the box and check the neck. It could be irritated nerves in the neck, or it could be an unstable cervical spine. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.